ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello and welcome back to another Outer Roll podcast episode brought to you by Goalie Monkey here on the Monkey Sports Podcast. We have a very fun uh, episode for you today. We had Ev Bomarito from Vaughn Custom Sports came into the office a couple weeks ago. We got to talk about the new V9 that's coming out soon. Um, a little bit of the technology that goes into goalie pads and kind of the future of what to expect from Vaughn. One thing that we touched on that I want to jump right into because it's something that as a non-hockey goalie, I, I have always found interesting, especially in a market that, or rather with product that's A, so expensive and B, so many different companies are available, is kind of how goalies find exactly what they're looking for when there's so many different specs. So I've got Grayson here from Goalie Monkey. Grayson, I want to kind of, like I said, jump right into this of like, I'll start off like, when did you know or when did you have the opportunity to know like, okay, I've found exactly what I want, or I know what to look for at least. I still haven't found exactly what I like. I get a set of pads and I think, oh, I really like this, but then, you know, I try something else and it's, oh, I like this a lot better for this reason. I now have a general idea after using a few different brands, kind of what I'm looking for generally, but... I, the new technology on every sort of pad, it changes, it brings new aspects, it, it's been surprising me every single day uh, when I learn something new, it's, it's I'm changing kind of what I like. So is there like, because the only thing I can really equate it to is lacrosse, obviously, which also has you yeah. know a, a wide range of stuff that you use and different pads and everything, but for the most part... And I guess you can make the argument about goalie pads too, but they all do the same thing. Like heads yeah. have different shapes and stuff, but... Like, when I break ahead, I'm not like, oh, man, I need to rush out and get the exact same thing. It's like, okay, I'm just going to try something new, and it's never that big of a deal. But, like, do pads have a period? Obviously, over time, they'll break down, but do they have a time where it's like, oh, man, these are shot, like, I'm going to get new ones? Yeah, well, the, with the new technology, the companies are trying to elongate the amount of time that you're in a pad. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you buy the, uh, the third-tier pad, it's going to break down a lot faster because of the materials and the construction that goes into that pad. But if you're buying a pro-level pad, uh, maybe seven years ago, that would have lasted you two years, depending on how you take care of things. That's a big thing, too, is if you're taking care of your gear, like you can elongate it for a very long time. Sure. I think we touched on it when I was talking to Ev about the older Vaughn pads that they used to like shrink down in size. It, it was, uh, they're like, oh, make sure you, uh, if you're a 34, make sure you buy a 35 mm -hmm. because in six months it's going to be a 34 because of the, uh, cause of the, the construction in it. Hmm. And so they've really gotten away from that and they're, they're a lot more consistent with keeping their shape. I, I know he mentioned that about the, uh, the V9 having the same shape over a long amount of time. And so, yeah, there used to be a period of time that there was, it's breaking down and you can feel it in the pad. But the time to change pads now is just either things are breaking, things are getting worn out. Uh, you just, you know, there's something wrong with it. I think that's your time to change. But that amount of time is, it fluctuates. When do goalies like turn that corner? Because I picture, you know, obviously like when I started playing lacrosse, having a starter kit and being like, yeah, whatever, this gets the job done. And then as I started to progress, understanding more of like, okay, I do need higher level gloves. Like, is there a time that a goalie just, again, turns that corner and thinks like, okay, I need to actually start shopping for like what I want to do. Like, when do you kind of know what you're looking for? A lot of it is the level that you play. If you're versing, uh, you know, a junior level or a college level player consistently, yeah, you're going to want a higher level pad if not like the pro model. But I think one of the biggest misconceptions in all of goaltending is that you need the pro level at like a younger age, especially now because the uh, the PVEs that I tried out, those are the senior level pads. But as someone who's been using pro for the last few years, I didn't notice a difference really with uh, any of like the protection or the construction that went into the PVEs. They were, they were very nice. If you didn't know any better, then you would think it's a pro pad. But uh, probably it, it's mostly on the how much how much you're gonna play and uh, the level that you're playing. Obviously, like when you when you're growing up, you're going into different sizes. 
but when once you hit that senior level that's when you have to evaluate where what you're doing what you want out of a pad and how much you're playing for for a uh, for like a beer league guy or like an older guy uh, you can get the pro level pad if you want this pad to last the next two to three years which with how much goalie pads are I feel like you would but if you want to go with a lower price point all the companies are they're creating pads at such a level that they can last you a year or two now so I'm curious like take you like your level of play yeah. right now playing you know a couple times a week but nothing yeah. super competitive or on a team necessarily assuming you're not the goalie monkey guy say yeah. you know whatever eight months ago before you were here what would have been your next step for like buying pads is it like okay i'm just gonna start doing research because obviously like it's an investment i mean it's a it's a yeah, used it's car huge, sometimes yeah. you're paying yeah five grand to get a new pad exactly, set yeah so is it something that like i think about myself or think about like big purchases and my thought is like to, for an example, like I bought a new cell phone. It's like, I'm going to buy the newest, most expensive one I can get now because I'm going to get the most like up-to-date up uh, technology, get you know the use out of it for a longer period of time. Is it kind of the same thought or is it like, oh man, I need to try stuff out and it doesn't necessarily matter if it's a model from two years ago or now I just want to find what works. Like what would be like your personal next steps? Yeah. Um, it's the same thought process for pads, you know, it's I'm going to get this top model now while I, especially for if I was just going to play, I would want to get a custom set because one, I want exactly what I want if I know what I want. And so with having a general idea of knowing that, I get exactly what I want at the highest level and I make it last the longest amount of time. Because if I'm comfortable in something, like I'm not going to want to move away from it. A lot of goalies are looking for that new style or... They're looking to change every year, year and a half. But if I was going to make like a real investment on it, I would probably go for the top level. But I also don't recommend that to everyone because it's a middle ground. Like if you have the money, obviously, yeah, it's a huge investment. If you have the money for it, go for it and then use it like as long as you can, like get what you want out of it. But if you're someone who wants to like look through changing every year, maybe going for the senior level instead of the pro isn't bad. The only difference between some of these are, is like one material that's put in between the two and then like a slight increase to the in, the construction. Yeah, it does show a difference over time, but for me, I think like going with something that if I'm familiar with how I want to play with a pad, then I will go with whatever the best is that I think. So we have a... a- pretty phenomenal program at goalie monkey at monkey sports of the goalie days which we've done for the past couple of years yeah and it's you know vendors coming into any of our stores um, i'm sure goalies that are listening to this at least i hope uh know about that but you know if you're not someone that lives near a monkey sports location or has the opportunity to go to one of these big vendor days how do you how do you like advise people to try to find what they're looking for without just hey go shell out four grand and hope it's what you want <laughs> yeah that's uh Obviously, there's a lot. There's a lot of programs like the Goalie Days, that um, at Goalie Days there's a bunch of different vendors from all the different companies who come in, and that's your day to figure out what you want. I was there. Uh, I think I was only here for a couple months at the time when we had our Goalie Days here in Texas, and um, I remember helping a couple guys for like five hours straight. Just because I, I, my advice to them was like, here's your day. Here's this guy over here made the equipment. This guy went through all the testing, talk to these guys and figure out what they want to give you in a pad and then have your own thoughts and go into things with an open mind. Cause you don't want to be looking at like, you know, like a Vaughn pad. If you were never in Vaughn before you don't want to go in this misconception that like, oh, I don't really like this because one of the guys that I helped, he was like, oh, I don't really like Vaughn. I was like, have you tried it? And he was like, not in a long time. And, and I gave him one of the, I think he gave him the VE8. And he was like, this feels amazing. Like, this is probably the best pad I've put on today. And I was like, yeah, like you, you got to have this with an open mind. But if you're not near one of our monkey sports stores and you're looking for something, there's a lot of programs out there that are demo type or places that you can go events that you can try on uh, a bunch of different stuff but I feel like if you're not open to either of those it's kind of hard to get an idea of what you want besides looking up reviews and looking up 
different types of uh, like gear analysis to try to figure out what other people thought and kind of put that on yourself and be, if I was this person, would I like the same thing? I'm sure, Grayson, you're happy to help people figure out the pads that they want, whether you're near a Monkey Sports store or not. Um, so reach out to us on social media, at Goalie Monkey on all social medias. But with that, we will go into our interview with Vaughn Custom Sports' Ev Bomarito, a guy that you would run into at one of the Goalie days if you did uh, make it out to one of those. So without further ado, Ev Bomarito. From Vaughn Custom Sports is Ev Bomarito. How's it going? It's good. How are you? Oh, I'm terrific. <laughs> How was the drive down here? Uh, it was excellent. It's actually up here. Up here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You came from yeah. Austin, right? Yeah, that's south. What were you doing out in Austin? Uh, went to see the Texas Stars, um, just visiting the team, uh, seeing the goalies, showing off some of the new V9 product that we brought in here. Really excited to kind of get this going and jumpstart uh, the new line. Awesome. Well, we're, we're glad you're here. We're glad you made the drive up here. Just to familiarize everyone who's listening with who you are, just kind of introduce yourself. Uh, what do you do for Vaughn? You know, what are your titles? What is your history with Vaughn? Oh, for sure. Uh, so I've been with Vaughn for about four years now. Um, always been a sales rep. Started out kind of, uh, I guess you could say I started in school. I was an intern. So the two summers I interned, I started off calling on club hockey and D3 because those are, you know, players and goalies that don't really get a lot of service. They don't get anyone to contact with directly. Typically, they're working with a coach who's trying to work through uh, a store who might not always know goalie. So having somebody in their back pocket is, you know, always key. So I had originally started out calling on D3 schools, club goalies, everything like that. And now today I work with, you know, a handful of pro teams, all levels of college hockey, and then uh, mainly focused on NAHL, but all junior hockey as well. Um, and then on the side too, we'll do a lot of content creation between running, you know, social media, me and several others will run the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and then we all kind of combine to create our videos to figure out how we want to market our product. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you can go to the Vaughn YouTube channel to check out Ev in action if you want to see anything <laughs> about the SLR2 gear. And then is there going to be any videos coming up for the uh, V9 stuff anytime soon? Yes, we're actually working on planning out uh, what we want to do, storyboarding and everything like that. So we're going to be really excited to post those and uh, give everybody, all the goalies, more info on this really, really exciting line with the V9 coming out. Ev, I'm mostly just curious, uh, before Vaughn, I mean, how long, what's your uh, hockey lifestyle like prior to, uh, to starting off in the industry? Um, so it actually really started out when I was probably, I'd always played hockey growing up, playing out, but uh, I fell in love with playing goalie in street hockey when Franklin had all those different sets of street hockey gear out. Yeah. So you had like the USA, you had the bullet ones, um, they had the camo pads, which I think might have been the same, the flame pads. Like yeah. I had two or three of those, just unbelievably sick. <laughs> um, so I started out playing street hockey and then roller hockey, elementary school. They needed a goalie, kind of started doing that, then junior high. And then eventually I obviously transitioned to ice hockey, played a little high school ice hockey. Um, then I decided to go to school, played club roller, still playing goalie, and that's pretty much all she wrote. I'm not very good, but you know what? I really, really know gear at the end of the day. <laughs> did, did the position make you a gearhead or did the gear make you a goalie? Um. No, I'm definitely, and I believe this is true for like 99% of goalies out there, whether it's pro, college, like just your average men's league guy, um, adult league, uh, you know, anyone playing goalie today, I think everything stems from the gear. You know, a lot of the guys I deal with now always have stories about, oh yeah, like when I was a kid, my dad, you know, got me into the room and then I would always go up to the goalie stuff and check it out. Or when you're watching games, you know, in the NHL and you saw like Mark andre Fleury's like all yellow set. And you saw like Jimmy Howard's iceberg, like that's what sparks it for guys. And then once you start playing, being able to like tinker with stuff, tweak things, make it yours, uh, that really adds to it. And then on top of it, I think the icing on the cake is the mask. You know, you get to wear like your personality on your head in front of everybody, in front of everybody in the stands and like you get to rock what you are. So I'm curious, just going off of that point, especially when you were kind of working with, like you said, goalies that didn't get a lot of love and stuff on the club level, is it tough to turn somebody towards, you know, kind of a Vaughn pattern or not necessarily Vaughn in particular, but just get them to change what they're so used to with, you know, if you've got a kid that's been using the same set of pads for five years or knows one line or something that he likes, is it hard to convince them or is it just like goalies are pretty open to, to checking new things out? No, that's a great question. Um, at the end of the day, I think I find more now kids 
are set in their ways, like they're diehard one brand, they're diehard Vaughn or they're diehard something else, but it's only because they've never had the opportunity to try. Mm -hmm. A lot of goaltending growing up is, you know, it's not a cheap position. Right. It's like when I started playing hockey, I swear, uh, when I started playing goalie, excuse me, my dad asked me like every other day for about two or three weeks, are you sure you want to play goalie? <laughs> like he had bought my pads already. They were in my house. He showed me them for Christmas. And he's like, are you sure you want to play goalie? Because we can still take this back. You could play out. Because he knew he played hockey. He knew the expenses of playing goalie that would come. So when I find that guys say that they're hard one way or the other, they like something definitely, you know, I'm never going to switch. It's typically because you never had the opportunity to try. So once you kind of break down, well, what do you like? Are you looking for a soft boot? Are, are you on the ice a lot? Do you slide a lot? Are you looking for something that's a little bit more quick? Or, you know, are you a bigger guy? Do you want a stiffer pad? Are you harder on stuff? When you start to break things down with goalies and really get into the nitty gritty, that's what we specialize in. And Vaughn is, yeah, the graphics are cool. Um, our stuff's well specced out, but at the end of the day, the service end of things where we can find out like what you need or what Grayson needs or what Chris Dudo needs, we can really break down the pad and get into it. Cause you know, we're goalie people making goalie equipment. That's the best part of what we do. So when it comes down to like really communicating with those players, working on, working on it with them, some people aren't going to switch. They are hard pressed on what they want, which is fine. But when we go in there, we show them exactly what we can do. You know, everybody gets the sample stuff. You check out demos or you see gear in the locker room. And from there, we can kind of explore the options. Because I think when we start, you know, chatting about what you're truly looking for, whether it's a, you know, a lightweight pad, you want to be fast, or you need a harder rebound, we can figure that all out. And by, you know, next vault, you're going to have it in your stall waiting for you. Yeah, I just to chime in on that, I have been playing goalie as mainly a goalie for... <clears throat> you know, over 10 years now, and you've known me for the last, what, five years? Yeah, way too long. Yeah, way too long <laughs> since since the camps. And uh, even then, like, I remember that whole week I was taking every single day, it was a different set of gear every single day. And I remember trying, like, the V5 stuff that, mm -hmm. that year. And I remember really liking that, but then going to try, I think it was, like, the NXGs at the time were out. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> a long time. And I remember trying those, and I was like, oh, these are pretty good. They had those bright yellow ones out yeah. for a while, all those yeah. demo sets. So I remember I was like, I really like that, and then I liked all this other stuff. Finding what you need is such a hard journey because I still don't exactly know what I like. I know more now than ever after trying like a handful of pads over the last year that I like something that's kind of like more stiff but still has a lot of flexibility like the SLR2. Mm -hmm. and I took those out one time and had like the best skate of my life. Like I was already having such a fun time just because everything was like super comfortable and I'm not, I'm not trying to like plug it. I'm just being honest here. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was you a- can, You can try to plug it too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like I'm, gear as a, it just our happens company. that it, it's Vaughn that like I was like, this is crazy. I was like, this is, it's clean. I think it was like single break, right? Single break, but yeah. it's very simple. Yeah. You know, this it was, is everything you need in a pad and nothing too much. Yeah, it was simple, straight up, easy to put on, and I didn't really have to do much adjusting with it. I didn't mess with any of the specs. I wanted to wear it as it was, and that's something I recommend for everyone. If there's a new pad with like a weird spec, you know, whether it be like a professor strap or like an elastic bootstrap, just try it how it is, and if you don't like it after that skate, then like get rid of it do whatever makes you play best but give everything a chance and then you'll eventually find your footing absolutely like i was in a room last week a uh, program and we were talking to some players and one of the goalies came up and mentioned he was still trying to figure out he's like i'm very very close to understanding exactly what i want yeah. but i'm not quite there yet and this is coming from you know a guy that's playing pro hockey i coach you know youth kids i coach high school and I still play a little bit myself today, but what I'm finding is regardless of where you're at, either goaltending itself is changing or you're developing still. You know, as you get older as a kid, your game's always gonna change. You're gonna meet new goalie coaches, the game's gonna get faster. Um, you're gonna understand playing east to west, making plays like that. Um, you're gonna understand your size as you start to grow. So your actual taste and what gear you like and what's going to best suit your style will always change because even today like I catch pucks better now that I've you know 
got made fun of by some of the guys I work with based on how I used to hold my hand when I was leaving college. So now I've switched my glove style from like a one-piece cuff that had a fingertip closure, the XR. Now I have the uh, VE8 two-piece cuff. So it's more of a hand squeeze. But the way I hold my hand, I love that. Um, so I think at the end of the day, even when you are set at stuff, it's never a bad idea to go out, try something and that's completely new, something different, because it may better tailor to what you're going towards. Uh, a kid I work with in Michigan who's playing pro hockey, he had never liked our gloves. He was a diehard 590 guy, um, always wore CCM, and eventually he had decided the way he was holding his hand he was going to change. And he found that one of our Ventus SLR, the first SLR product, uh, sorry, glove, he tried that on, skated with it, and he loved the way it catched because it allowed him to hold his hand more upright. He didn't feel like he had to switch left. Now, does a glove tell you how you need to hold your hand? No. You could put a one-piece cuff on. That's a fingertip close, and you can hold it up and down. You could hold it left to right. That's totally up to you where you put your hand in your position. But... I think from a mindset standpoint, because he had always worn that glove and carried his hand left to right and been so wide, he just needed a fresh glass of water that would kind of change his taste and allow him to go upright. And it's just like maybe it's a mental thing that we're just getting away from because we get so comfortable in our tendencies as goalies. It's it's always a never-ending journey until you really pin down exactly what you like. And even when you do, you still might have something better in the door or something new comes out right <laughs> exactly that's the worst part it, that's of what i'm goalie. saying like <laughs> yeah you, know, you think you might have it all dialed in and then this next season of gear comes out and you're like well that's better than what i'm using and i i, I can't change that so have you made a point not not to turn the table too much yeah, but you made okay. a point about the the game itself changing and goalies kind of learning not only as their skill set changes but as the game changes do you think that's something that you know with the v9 coming out and things like that you guys have to stay on top of the way the game changes or is it just constantly building on like what you've had in the past no that's something we look at as a company every day um today you look at the reverse right playing in the reverse vh the ivh uh whichever you prefer to call it now, with our new V9 chest pad, we notice guys are getting into that position. What happens when you're there and guys are point blank on the goal line? They're firing pucks. They're trying to score. They're trying to squeak one by mm, you on the inside. so many times from that. Yeah. <laughs> Ruined my junior career. <laughs> <laughs> Had it not been for that, you would still be playing. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, the podcast wouldn't even exist. It would exactly. have something completely different. <laughs> um, Life's crazy. <laughs> but when guys are firing the puck from the wall now, or from the goal line where they're walking in and jamming, guys are getting exposed on the rib side. So what we did with the new V9 chest is we built it so that would better the body would better wrap uh, around your stomach and then catch into the little bit into the ribs so you have that more protection. So now you can be fearless on the post. You can be fearless leaning into shots and making sure you're taking up as much space as well as being protected. Um, looking at today's game, sliding, everything, there's so much on ice, right? So having that quick slide material, which is like that weave base with a coating on top, that allows guys to be so much faster. And at the end of the day, one of the guys that started out with our quick slide had mentioned as he got through practice, he noticed he was less tired because the quick slide allows you to slide a lot easier. So on a two-on-one play, you're not like completely exerting muscle to get left to right. As you slide through bad ice, you're not pushing as hard because the quick slide allows you to slide left to right. It's uh, gliding over all those ice chips, the snow, everything like that. So those are the things that we're looking at. There's other things, obviously, like within gloves, we always want to be conscious of weight because we want to make sure that everything is durable, but it's lightweight. So that way, when guys are sweating and they're getting heavy, you're not starting off at five pounds and getting to eight pounds mm -hmm. by the, you know, the end of the second. We want to keep everything as light as possible. We look at different materials, how we can keep that breathable so it dries quickly, things like that. Introducing the carbon fiber to the core has allowed us to help that pad keep its rigidity, keep its shape, and allow it to perform where you get a little bit of flexibility, but when you push down on that pad, it will respond. It's not stiff as a board. We could make it more stiff, but it, the pad over time keeps its shape. Where guys used to think of us as the company where, oh, it's going to get soft. It's going to lose three inches. You know, I got to get a 36.2. I'm 5'6". <laughs> By the time like I break it in, it'll be a 33. Now with the carbon fiber and having a soft core that's built around being that style of pad, we're in perfect position to be able to cater to a lot of different goalies. 
it's cool to see a company over so many years, like from so long ago, go through all these changes to bring in the modern game and correct all these, not really mistakes, but just all these like flaws in the pad to what it is now. No, absolutely. And I think it's very exciting for us to look at this line, the velocity line to see where it's come from. Because like you said, when we, we had met, you tried on a V5 pad, which is unbelievable, the 7800, which to me, you know, I do like something that's softer, that wraps the leg a little bit more, kind of, you know, wraps around the skate and you get a little bit more response and, you know, that tapered feel. Um, but now having core pads, the puck comes off a little bit harder. So for me, that means less work. And I yeah. love that, right? You probably do too. Yeah. But the big thing here is everything's lighter. It's easy to put on. But at the end of the day, with this strapping setup, because a lot you see all those people, oh, no leather straps. Oh, they got rid of magnetic straps. This pad will respond the same, and we would not have made the changes otherwise if we didn't think this is going to work. We put this pad together with the idea that it's going to be lightweight, it's going to respond just like it used to, regardless of what straps you had before, but now you don't have to deal with all those leather buckles, all those things weighing you down, slowing you down, and making you exert more throughout a game or practice to get the same job done. That perfectly kind of segues into our next broad topic is the V9 gear. Just to start off kind of the creative process from the previous model to this year, what were the, some of the big things that you were focusing on and some of the things that you know you looked at from the previous velocity pad? Well, to start, the chest and the pant were really big for us. Uh, the pant and the chest new ruling with the NHL has been pretty big. Obviously, everything's changed. It's been tapered. The pants have been made smaller. The chest has been trimmed down. Now, with our chest, we're not necessarily trimming things down, but it's giving guys a better look as to what they're using. Now we have one-piece molds in the forearm and the bicep, which is going to be huge. So there's no seams. You get full protection. And like I said, when you're leaning into shots, whether you're in the reverse or things are you know coming out from far and you're square, you're fully protected. We have that more wrap in the body so that way when you're getting caught in positions where you're leaning or you might take a shot from the side, you have protection where you're not exposed. And then just the full adjustability of the arms, because those do come on Velcro, that'll allow you to play with, well, I'd like my glove side out just a little bit further so that way the sleeve isn't pushing off my glove or I don't feel the cuff of my glove rubbing on the chest protector. Let me just adjust that back, you know, about an inch, inch and a half and you can take off the Velcro, move it, replace it. Now you're fully customizing your own product, right? Looking at the pant itself, what we did there is we actually took the mold and we that we use for our NHL pants and we used that to shape the mold and the new retail pant for the V9 Pro Carbon pant. That'll give guys an idea of what this is like because at the end of the day, the NHL rules are usually kind of trickling down towards other leagues. Now, we don't see it at college necessarily, but all of us are working our way up. Well, maybe not us anymore, but as you're playing as a kid, you building to play junior hockey, college hockey, and then ideally pro. So that's what we're kind of going with. Um, it's just like when we trim down pads from 12 inches to 11 inches. We want to offer everybody else what these guys use. Uh, in terms of some cool new features in between the pad glove and blocker, the V9 blocker we actually removed, if you look now, is on the index finger and the pinky finger. We took out those inside seams. So one, you're going to get a better response from your stick. Two, you're going to get better durability because without those seams wearing on your tape, your grip tape, whatever, or directly on the stick, nothing can rip. So now you're going to get a better feel, but those fingers will never split on those seams. And then uh, taking a look at the gloves, both gloves now are going to feature our shock shield in the palm. So not only are you going to have a pro palm built into the felt that's already laced in, but you're going to have the added foam on top, which is a sport foam that we include in the palm. And you can see it directly when you buy the product because these are sewn into small pockets that are in the glove. And overall, the weight's just unbeatable on these. And then these always can be custom changed with if you want a single T or you want to do a skate lace, all that stuff can be done still on these gloves. So what are the uh, two models of gloves that you have? So we have for the V9, it's going to be the V9 Pro Carbon Glove, and then we're going to have the V9 XP. The difference being the V9 Pro Carbon Glove is going to, is going to be the two-piece with a break similar to like a 600, and then we're going to have the V9 XP Pro Carbon Glove 
which is going to be closer to a 590. Both of them are going to have the double spine T-webs, but at the end of the day, it's really being more comfortable which, with which brake you prefer um, because those are so different. And then with the pad itself, we actually added some really cool features um, to help maintain stability. We still have the carbon reinforced core, but what we did was we trimmed down the outer roll and we thinned down the top portion of the profile. So when you look at it, I mean, it's noticeably thinner. Uh, when you get into the back of the pad, one of my favorite new features is we added a calf pillow. So right when you're landing, that calf pillow is actually gonna help the calf landing piece, what we call the bottom ILP, land flush and give you a great seal to the ice. So say, you know, our game is made up of tenths of a second, right? So say you're moving left to right and you're going down and it's a two on one play, but as you go down, that puck might have just missed the front of your pad. Now that you have that little bit of pillow responding as your calf is dropping to the ice, you're more likely to catch pucks now and get a really nice seal on that back calf wing. So the knee lock actually features a removable Velcro piece. So that way if you want to choose to change out the foam or even if you wear out the landing in your knee wrap, you can change that and we can send, hook you up with new ones. So it allows for a little bit of customizability. So that way if you need something stiffer, if you want to look more a little bit taller or you like a stiffer landing because you have a really nice knee pad, those things can all be changed. The RRC strap in here is actually going to be fully removable on both sides. So that way not only can you decide if you like it, you can adjust it so it sits a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, or you can take it out altogether. And then we are gonna feature on this stock, we're gonna have the elastic toe ties, which will help allow you to get your toe closer to the ice. But when you stand up, the elastics actually help snap the pad back flush in front of your leg. That's something you don't get with hockey lace, right? Yeah. Every time you stand up, you have to push your pads back in. And then lastly, we're going to feature a floating boot piece. So that way what used to be a part of the shin on the inside flap is now going to be floating. So that way when you go down to your butterfly, it's allowing your skate to get closer to the ice. So you get quicker response. So whether you're getting back to your feet or you're pushing yourself left to right into a slide, you're going to be able to get a lot quicker response by getting your still to the ice, which, like I said, you know, tenths of a second that make up goals, right? Yeah. That's it's the difference between making a saver you know, taking a goal. So if I had one more question, just looking at the, the marketing and stuff so far through, uh, through what we've seen through teasers and everything, the no testing needed uh, tagline that you guys have been using. I'm curious kind of what, where that came from and what that really means. So we kind of got into it here. Um, you know, when I had met Grayson how many years ago, he tried out the V5. We originally had the first V1 that had blown everybody away. The velocity line has been tried and true. You know what you're getting with it. It's so reliable in terms of what you're going to get out of the product and the feel is always there. So obviously we went and we did our research. We checked our materials. We made sure that the product's going to be durable. We made sure it's built to last for players that are going to need a year and a half, two years out of their pads. We made sure that everything is going to function the way, you know, a softer, more flexible pad should. And at the end of the day, the best part here is it's built so well and it's the most exciting velocity pad that we've ever had that this is exactly what you need if you're a velocity person you're going to love it and if you've never worn velocity before and you try it out we guarantee that you're definitely going to like a lot of the features that are here as as someone who doesn't know goalie pads uh very well i can appreciate that you guys keep the same name and number going down the line instead of like you know the whatever 2600 pad name it's just hey v1 v2 v3 so appreciate that from a non-goalie side no problem it's easier to sell that way right 100 yeah, yeah, yeah we can do yeah, a lot absolutely. more volume <laughs> uh, yeah there you go yeah it it gives everyone like a sense of familiarity mm -hmm. throughout every line which is a weird rarity in in all specialty sports seemingly is the the names of things so keep it up yeah <laughs> we will we'll, we'll take we'll take that in a note it, yeah no <laughs> perfect perfect thank you <laughs> yeah. all right and then uh to wrap it up we'll go into a couple of the fan questions that we put on our instagram um just to start out uh for the v9 coming stock what is it what are the stock specs uh was it basically what you had said before is there anything different about the stock pad uh, stock on the shelf will be everything we kind of went over, the elastic toe ties, um, the floating boot wing that used to be a part of the calf wrap, um, the RRC being removable, 
all those interchangeable parts, having that knee wrap that you can change out or move, all that stuff is gonna be stock there. The one thing that we did differently than we've ever done before, which is very, very exciting for the V9, is we've, you might have seen those, the new order forms. Yeah. So you can now fully customize your core. So rather than just calling in and asking, hey, can I get a stiffer core? And then us having to go through, well, what are you specifically looking for? You're gonna have the options when you place a custom order. So anybody has access to those sheets. It's not just the stores, it's gonna be customers overall. The pictures are very clear. So you can really break down, I want a double break or I want a single, but then I want a stiff core here. Uh, I want my boot to be soft, or maybe I want a little bit more angle. I want it to be stiff because I like kind of pr compressing my boot a little bit, or you know the strapping changes and everything like that. All that you can visibly see, and it's very, very clear. And we can't wait to see what people come up with based on what they're looking for, and then what the actual result of the feel is going to be. That's going to be the biggest change with, you know, along with the V9 is just ordering is going to be a lot more clear for everybody. From the VE8 to the V9, what are your biggest changes? Uh, the biggest change that I like is one, the top profile of the pad from about the knee up is thinned out, the thinner outer roll. Those are two easy ways for us to drop weight. What I'm really excited above, about is from the pro carbon line to pro to intermediate to junior to youth, everything will feature quick slide on the inside edge. So whether you're wearing like a 30 inch plus two intermediate pad, or you're in a 34 plus two pro pad, or you do end up wanting to get carbon pads, everyone's gonna have access to quick slide, which I think is the most important thing that we have for people to try. Because like I said, when you see guys gliding across you know, ice in the third period after it hasn't been cut. It's fully shaved up. There's snow everywhere, but it looks like the Zam just got off by the way they're playing. That's the best part. Are there any NHL goalies who are going to be in it soon, or are there any who actually do have it right now? So, Frank Kuz in Colorado, he's currently in it. Yep. Uh, we have met with Peter Mrazek. He's going to get into it. And as we move forward, you will start to see a few more of our Velocity guys looking at it, getting into it, trying it. The one beauty of working with Vaughn is we never force guys directly into new product. As much as we'd love for them to get into the new stuff right away, if there's something they're very particular about or there's something they like on a previous pad, we still make all that for them. Obviously, you look at you know our number one star with that scenario is Jonathan Quick. Yeah. We've made a lot of current tweaks to his pad. We've tried to make it lighter. We've tried to give him the response that he's looking for. But at the end of the day, he loves the way that that 76 wraps around his shin, wraps the boot, and just the feel he gets. And I think it, it's completely understandable based on the way you watch him play. It's unique to anybody else in the NHL. And you look at a lot of the top goalies, that's... That's what makes them different. That's what sets them apart. Their style is completely different. So, you know, if it works for him, then it works for us. Ed, thanks for making the trip. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Special thanks again to Ev Bomarito for coming on to the Outer World podcast. Be sure to check out V9 coming this spring and customized available soon on GoyMonkey.com. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Outer Roll Podcast brought to you by Goalie Monkey here on the Monkey Sports Podcast. We will be back for another episode of the Outer Roll on March 13th. We're going to have Warriors Kirk Allen in to talk about the new 2020 Warrior pad lines and what to expect out of them. We'll be back again for another episode of the Monkey Sports Podcast next Friday. It's going to be Monkey Ball, brought to you by Baseball Monkey. So if you're a baseball fan yourself or know anyone, make sure that they are subscribed to the Monkey Sports Podcast. But until then, we'll see you next time.